Good morning. Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church on this Lord's Day. We are overjoyed to be gathered with each one of you on this morning as we set our hearts and minds together, worshiping God. We see, uh, and we offer each of you welcome, we see that the Priggles are worshiping with us and, and John Picar, as well as the Coopers and KC and Randall and Mary Margaret. Welcome each of you. And as the, we f- feel free to use the comment section um, of this worship to greet one another as if we're uh, joining over coffee or donuts together together in fellowship as we do when we are physically gathered together. We know that even in this time of distancing as we battle the coronavirus, we know that God is still with us, persevering in this time as we may feel separated and isolated, but The presence and the Spirit of God binds us together, even in this distance. So let God be in our midst as we worship together on this day and as we sing our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Let us bring together our thoughts and our hearts and our minds into a prayer of confession, knowing that God is eager to forgive us as we confess. Let us pray. This prayer comes to us from Ted Loder's My Heart in My Mouth, Prayers for Our Lives. Come now to find us, O God, of such truth that sweeps away all lies, of such grace that shrivels all excuses. Come now to find us, for we have lost ourselves. Let your spirit move mercifully to recreate us from the chaos of our lives. We have been careless of our days, our loves, our gifts, our chances. 
We withdraw in arrogance, hide in timidity, disappear in fear, rather than reaching out in hope, engaging in humility, risking in faith. Our prayer is to change, O oh God, but not out of despair of self, but out of love for you and for the selves we long to become before we simply waste away. Let your mercy move in and through us now, freeing us to love honestly. Enable us to trust bravely, reuniting us to live joyfully and claiming us for the audacious revolution of Christ in your kingdom. Amen. Friends, the mercy and the love of God is offered to us on this day and every day. Friends, Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we know God's forgiveness and God's peace. So at this time, please share the peace of Christ with one another. Share it with those sitting around you. Share it by typing it into the comments. And just, friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. We say peace of Christ to Jeff Stimson. May the peace of Christ be with you, Lex, and the Rakestraw family who are gathered here. Peace to you, Elizabeth and David, Tanya and John, KC, Randall and Martha, Mary Margaret. May the peace of Christ be with you. Hi friends, in our Bible story today, Jesus's friend Peter comes to him with a question about forgiving people. I imagine Peter saying something like, hey Jesus, I know you say that God wants us to forgive people. Okay, I get that, but some people just keep doing things that make me mad and some people do really bad things. There has to be some kind of limit on how many times I'm supposed to forgive people, right? And to answer this question, which I think we can all feel, Jesus tells Peter a story. And I'd like to read you a story this morning. It's a little critter book by Mercer Mayer called, We All Need Forgiveness. We all need forgiveness. Today, mom made a pineapple upside down cake. I was only gonna take a teensy taste when I knocked the cake on the floor. Oops, sorry, mom, I said. Well, that is the most upside down pineapple upside down cake I've ever made, said mom. But it's okay, little critter. Accidents happen sometimes. Dad asked me to get a wrench from the garage. I found one, but the oil can was in the way and the oil spilled onto the floor. I hope dad would forgive me for spilling his oil. I went out to the sandbox to play, but my beautiful castle was almost washed away. I'm sorry, little critter, said sister. I was just watering the garden. It was an accident. Well, yeah, right, I said. After that, I wanted to color, so I lined up all my crayons in a row. Gray Kitty pounced on them and made a mess. Bad cat, I said. I'm going outside, and I stormed out the front door. I went for a ride on my bike, but Timothy rode into me. My bike tripped over and the handlebars got all bent. I'm sorry, little critter, said Timothy, but I was too mad to say it was okay. I put on my mask to go scuba diving. All I needed was my snorkel, but I couldn't find it anywhere. And then Dog jumped into the tub. He had my snorkel in his mouth and it was all chewed up. 
bad dog, I said. At the bus stop, Gabby was trying out my new yo-yo and she got the string all tangled. I didn't mean to, little critter, she said. Well, I am never letting you play with my toys again, Gabby, I said. At lunch, I was about to eat my yummy chocolate chip cookie when Henrietta bumped into the table and it fell on the floor. It broke into a million pieces. Oh, I'm sorry, little critter, said Henrietta. But sorry did not help one bit because my cookie wasn't good anymore. Then, at the dress rehearsal for our play, I waved my arms a little too hard and I knocked over the candy house. Gabby and Gator tripped over it and so did Henrietta and the candy decorations went all over the place and the whole set came crashing down. It was a huge mess. Miss Kitty said we had to stop the play and clean up and now everyone is mad at me because it took us a long time to clean up and we didn't have time for the fun surprise Miss Kitty had planned. I said I was sorry, but everyone was still mad. I'm gonna stop the story there. It looks like Little Critter has no problem saying he's sorry and asking for forgiveness when he messes up his mom's cake or spills oil over, all over the floor or messes up the whole school play set. But he does seem to have a problem with forgiving people and dogs and cats when they make him mad or mess up his stuff. That's the hard thing. In our story today, Jesus reminds us that there is no end to us messing up and needing to be forgiven. And we come back to that hard thing. There is no end to us needing to forgive others. No end, Jesus says, no limit. But there is a good part. Jesus says there is no end to God forgiving us when we mess up and say we're sorry. I hope you will think about forgiveness this week. How have you hurt somebody's feelings or messed something up? And are you still mad at someone who hurt your feelings or messed up something that was yours? Jesus didn't say that living in God's ways was going to be easy, but it is hard work that God wants us to do. Let's close with the prayer. Holy God, thank you for always loving and forgiving us. Help us let go of our grudges and hurt feelings and anger at our friends and family. Help us to do the hard work of loving and forgiving others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
A few years ago, my husband and I were on a trip to France. We had been traveling for about a week already and made our way to the Palace of Versailles. Now, before a trip, I love reading tour books and planning our activities around tips and advice from the experts. And it was re recommended to arrive to the palace early in the morning. And don't go on a Tuesday because that's the highest visiting day. Well, because of some circumstances, we ended up arriving to Versailles on a Tuesday at about 11 a.m. on a very sunny morning. And there were hundreds of people, maybe even a thousand people in line to enter. Our original plan was to first go to the gardens to explore during the day and then return to the palace later in the afternoon because the lines would supposedly be down at that time and the late afternoon sun is particularly brilliant in the palace's hall of mirrors. But we were carrying our backpacking backpacks that were weighed down by a bunch of extra weight. There were several additional bottles of wine that we had picked up over the few days that we had just spent in wine country, and they were quite heavy. You see, we had thought that there would be lockers at the train station where we could put down our bags, but there were not. Nor was there a place to put your bags at the gardens. No, the only place to leave our bags were at the bag check on the other side of this long line. I couldn't imagine enjoying the gardens while carrying the weight of this pack. So we decided to go to the palace first snaking along that forever long line. And eventually I couldn't take the weight anymore, scooching our bags along. So I sat down with our bags to the side as Ben snaked through this hours long line. When we finally made it to the entrance and through to check our bags, I breathed such a sigh of relief the burden of the weight, those things that we chose to carry around with us, the choices we had made, they held us back. It stopped us from acting out our plans, from moving forward with a lightness that would have allowed us the freedom to explore the beauty that was available to us on that day. No, that extra weight that we carried, it slowed us down, it weighed us down, it changed our plans, and it dragged us to a winding, sun-scorched halt. This is how it can be with forgiveness. Because forgiveness is putting down all of that baggage that we're dragging around. It is leaving it behind. When we consider forgiveness to others, forgiveness of ourselves even, it's about whether we wish to continue to carry that baggage or it's a letting go. And then we can be free to explore the glorious gardens of life without being weighed down by those things that we are carrying. With that in mind, let's look at today's Bible passage and see what light Jesus sheds on the topic of forgiveness. Let's read from the Gospel of Matthew, a parable from chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For the reason the kingdom of heaven, for this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he brought, when he began the, the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, 
the Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions in payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay me what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then this Lord, his Lord, summoned him and said, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, in whom we live and move and have our being. Amen. Forgiveness is an essential practice and foundation of Christian faith, a hallmark of Christian community. But this one is so hard to practice. When we've been wronged, we so often feel justified in our anger, our grudges, plotting real or imaginary revenge, rather than living into that golden rule in everything you do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the first, for this is the law and the prophets. We evoke its reverse. We say, we say to ourselves, well, I do unto you as you've done unto me, rather than the other way around. Or like little critter in today's story time, it finds it really hard to give forgiveness, even when we find ourselves asking for forgiveness a lot. No, when we... When we give it, when we are in the position of forgiveness, we want to put conditions on it. We want to keep an account, a tally, build up those things and hold on to them. And this way we have fodder for our interaction, sowing the seeds of bitterness that turn in so often to deep and painful wounds that divide relationships and at times seems so impossible to repair. When we keep tabs on the way that people have have harmed us, not just on these larger levels, but the subtle wrongs or differences or miscommunications that happen all of the time, and when those go unforgiven, they build up into this scorekeeping of what I've done right and what you've done wrong. Yet Peter asks, how many times, Lord, should I forgive? And Jesus gives this ambiguous number, 77 times. Or in some reading, some translations, it says seven times, 77 times. The idea behind this number is that it is, it's not countable. It's so large that we can't keep track of it. And in the parable, the 10,000 talents, that is the amount of the debt, that is incalculable too. There's no way in a lifetime that amount could be paid by this worker, this servant. 
These incalculable numbers suggest a moving away from scorekeeping and allowing the practice of forgiveness to seep into our daily practice as part of our faith, perpetually tapping into the nature of forgiveness, seeking to repair those relationships and moving forward in sisterhood and brotherhood. Now, last week, we put down the stones that we had been carrying around, those angers, resentments, fears, grudges, and burdens that we had been carrying around with us. And one of you this week told me, well, if we put them down, we can't just go ahead and pick those stones back up again. We have to do the work of keeping those stones down. This is part of forgiveness, too. We have to be intentional and practice this. Because forgiveness is a spiritual practice. It is committing yourself to a relationship with those around you and moving forward. To forgive is to make a conscious choice to release the person who who has wounded us from the sentence of our judgment however justified those judgments may be. It represents a choice to leave behind our resentment or desire for retribution. Presbyterian pastor Marjorie Thompson puts it like this, forgiveness involves excusing persons from the punitive consequences they deserve because of their behavior, even when that punishment seems and is justified. The behavior remains condemned, but the offender is released from the effects as far as the forgiver is concerned. In forgiveness, we recognize the things that have happened and we choose to release them, but not in a way that continues to allow emotional and physical harm over and over again. If The person we are working to forgive keeps on doing that same kind of thing that hurts me and pains me. This isn't what we're talking about. That is abusing one's ability to forgive. And, And that's not the purpose of this text. Please hear me right. If you are in a toxic relationship, an abusive relationship, I'm not telling you to make choices that continually put you into harm's way. This is not what this story is about. The church has done much harm over the centuries telling women to stay, to go back to abusive husbands. This is not that. Forgiveness isn't being about a pushover, isn't about being a pushover or allowing others to walk over you. Let's look at this parable. The master valued the relationship and the way forward, but the servant looked to his brother and did not offer the same. And in the story, we see that he's thrown to be tortured. This part of the story, it seems so extreme, and so often in these parables, we get these exaggerated and extreme consequences for behavior. But there, to make a point, it calls us to recognize the torture that holding on to those wounds does to us. This parable speaks a truth that is familiar to many who have experienced injury or trauma at the hands of another. One's ability to forgive, it does not always come easily, nor is it necessarily a quick or simple process. At times, it is necessary to forgive from a distance. Some wounds are so deep, some debts are so large that each, that human forgiveness seems next to impossible. Rabbi Harold Kushner tells this story. A woman in my congregation comes to see me. She says to me, since my husband walked out on us, every month is a struggle to pay our bills. I have to tell my kids, no, 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 while he's living it up somewhere else with his new wife. How can you tell me to forgive him? I answer her, I'm not asking you to forgive him because what he did was acceptable. 
It wasn't. It was mean and selfish. I'm asking you to forgive because he doesn't deserve the power to live in your head and turn you into a bitter and angry person. I'd like to see him out of your life emotionally, but you keep holding on to him. You're not hurting him by holding on to that resentment, but you are hurting yourself. Forgiveness is not denying our hurt or pain, the wrong that has been done. No, because when we minimize what has happened to us or gloss over it or tell ourselves that it wasn't really that bad, we're not truly forgiving from the heart. By minimizing it, we're not fully forgiving the wrong. Forgiveness is a possibility only when we acknowledge the negative impact of another person's actions or attitudes in our lives. The work of forgiving is not easy. Perhaps you have forgiven the person and they did not show remorse or change their behavior or own up to their offenses. And so you find yourself in an unforgiving framework all over again. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness takes great strength. Desmond Tutu shared in the book of forgiving, forgiveness is not an effortless act for any of us. It's best to break down our forgiving into small, bite-sized pieces and begin from wherever you are standing. Tell your story for as long as you need to. Name your hurts until they no longer pierce your heart. Grant forgiveness when you are ready to let go of a past that cannot be changed. Reconcile or release the relationship as you choose. We, when considering forgiveness, must ask how the relationship is worth rebuilding through forgiveness. That power takes great strength. The power of forgiveness, it allows us to move on and frees ourselves from being trapped into those broken moments in time. Sometimes those broken moments of times are things also that we have done and we have to do that hard work of forgiving ourselves. How often has this happened to you? You've moved on from a past hurt, but you find yourself laying in bed at night replaying some moment over and over in your head. You've gone years from a situation, but all of a sudden the memory of it pops up and you flush with shame or regret. Even years after that moment, and it might replay randomly, and we hate ourselves all over again a little bit more. We spend years replaying stupid mistakes that we've made, and we torture ourselves with it. This is hard work, laying down those heavy bags that we might move forward, releasing the burden of those things that we are lugging around. In Christian community, our call is to work on this. We can work on it together. If you see, look at in verse 31 of the scripture today, you see how the other people in the story, they saw the unforgiving man and they held him to account. It reads, when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. They wanted that man to know how he had wronged their fellow community member. Each week at church, we enact a ritual of forgiveness. We, we say words and reflection in our prayer of confession every week. That is an action of forgiveness. We name our confessions aloud 
and we are reminded of God's mercy. So let's work on this together, going even further and learn to weave this practice into our daily lives, a daily practice of confession, of forgiveness, of letting go, of putting that heavy bag down. My friends, because this is the good news, it is in Jesus Christ that we are forgiven. So may it be so. Amen. We have just a few announcements this morning. The first as that 
we um, join with uh, the community of Memphis in grieving the loss of Jenny Catherine Wilson, who um, so beautifully sung in our sanctuary and as part of our choir. And um, if you would like to send a card of bereavement to um, Amy and Dawn, to her parents at this time, please uh, feel free to go ahead and send it to the office and we and write attention um, to the parents and we will make sure to gather those and um, send them along to Amy and to Dawn. Um, we also um, have, we have a few uh, Zoom announcements immediately following our service today. We will be gathering for a time of conversation and fellowship on Zoom. You can find the link to that, uh, to that meeting on our website, uh, firstpresmemphis.org. We, this week on Tuesday, we will be wrapping up our summer-long study on the PCUSA anti-racism policy. We will have some time to reflect over the study and some uh, thoughts about where to go next, where to go from here. So that's at 1215 on Tuesday, and uh, we invite you to be part of that conversation. We are having Bible study on Thursday at 3.30 p.m. We'll discuss the next week's scripture, and um, next week we'll be, the, or this week we'll be studying another parable. This will be the parable um, from Matthew 21, the workers in the field, and um, would love to invite you to be part of that Bible study with us on Thursday. Our weekly newsletter uh, has been going out each week on Thursdays. Please let us know, contact us if you'd like to receive that as a hard copy, mailed hard copy, instead of in your virtually in your inbox. Uh, just make sure that we know and we can note that we have the correct address and we will be happy to mail you out a copy of that newsletter. Also, if you have any announcements or corrections that you've seen from a previous week's newsletter, Please let us know before noon on Tuesday so that we might um, get those in to the week ahead um, for those announcements. This week on Monday, tomorrow evening, will be our uh, monthly session meeting. So if you have um, any, a reminder to our session members that are watching, please uh, check your inbox for the Zoom link for our session meeting. And if there's anything that you feel, if you're not a session member, if you feel needs discussed, please uh, reach out to one of the session members and let them know um, of your uh, thoughts or encouragements or concerns. Um, and we'd love to discuss that tomorrow evening in our um, in our session meeting. We have also um, a few uh, continued prayer concerns and some new ones. Of course, we um, pray, uh, we join our hearts um, in prayer for those grieving the loss of Jenny. But we also lift up um, prayers for um, Elizabeth's sister-in-law, Dottie, as she has had some um, sad, uh, some challenging news uh, this, this past week. So please keep her um, and that family in your prayers as well. At this time, let us give from our hearts, give deeply and share what we have been given in our time of offering. Let us pray. O oh God of all seasons and settings of our lives, allow us to keep our awareness of you, even when our doubts and cynicism seem to close like a fog and you seem far removed. Help us to look for your light in our midst. When the music rises or a rainbow appears after a rainfall, as we hear a baby giggle or the cries of someone standing for justice, 
Allow the fog to lift our spirits and our dreams so that we might see the gifts from you. We might open our eyes and allow our voices to join in praise of you. O oh God of mercy and the marginalized, sometimes we get discouraged by the despair of the world, shadowed by the pain and the sickness, the pain of starving, the cries of the oppressed, the excluded, and the exploited. O oh God, teach us once again to listen and know the need for our compassion. That when we are too weak to carry the burdens of our brothers and sisters you have left to our care, awaken us to your beauty, to your love. Inspire us to do the most that we can do, to make grace real to others and to ourselves. Help justice roll down like waters and peace flow like a river and beauty spring from ugliness. Oh God, we pray that you grant strength and trust and hope in our hearts. Let the words that we have raised in prayer take root in our spirits and turn into praise of you. Keen our awareness so that we might go forward with grace and eyes open. Touch us and heal us. Guide us and challenge us. That we might sense your presence and seek your will. O oh God, may we grow in awareness of the way that you answer our prayers through using the, through using us in answering prayers of our sisters and our brothers. May we not miss your grace, nor fail in creativity, nor falter in generosity, so that we might join together as mem members of this wonderful human family of yours, as we join our voices in Jesus' name, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Friends, go out into this day and lay down those heavy bags, those burdens, and seek to live into the call of forgiveness because God has forgiven each one of you. And friends, as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. And may the Lord's face shine upon you and grant you peace on this day 
and forevermore. Amen. Amen.